Thanks for watching. This is part three of my Axial SEX6 Jeep Gladiator build. Uh, in the last video, I've showed you how to make all of this stuff using a cardboard initially and then eventually turning that into a dull rim pieces, putting that on your uh, CNC machine or turning it out on your CNC machine. How you take your measurements and basically walk you hopefully through uh, most of my creative process in case you're interested in that. Uh, in this video, we still need to attach this to whatever it is that we made last week and then hopefully make this look good because currently there is of course there's a massive gap sitting right in front of those uh, rear wheels because we have stretched this thing uh, quite a bit. The wheelbase is stretched 72 millimeters. I also pulled the back bumper out another 17 millimeters. So overall we need to add 89 millimeters to this uh, body and hopefully do it in a way that doesn't really look that noticeable. Now I do want it to look like uh, a Jeep Gladiator so I do want to see if I can somehow make a distinguishment between the cab section and then the bed section that sits uh, in the back over here. Um, of course there's only so much you can do working with an existing Lexan body that's also why I made this roll bar piece over here. Uh, this one has a slot machined into it that catches the body so it doesn't flop around uh, at all actually. Uh, also this roll bar section is at the exact same height as a 3D printed roof rack that I still want to add at some point in the future but for now we just want to have something that is structurally sound and that also starts to look a bit good hopefully. I use six millimeters of Delrin for this uh, structural part uh, that of course is absolute overkill to use on the sides over here. Now I could go ahead and use for example a carbon fiber or some other fancy expensive material. However, I don't want to do that. What I want to use is black styrene that goes with the theme nicely. I also think it uh, ties in with some of the existing parts on this truck pretty well without making it look too obvious that I did this at home in my shed. Uh, so for that reason black styrene is a really nice way to go, black acrylic, uh, whatever you have. Each fender section that I made consists of a, kind of an inner liner and then an outer piece. Uh, it is two millimeters of uh, styrene, it has one glossy side that is uh, protected by a uh, plastic and then it also has a flat side. Now I did experiment a tiny bit to see if I wanted to have the glossy side on the outside or if I wanted to have the flat on the outside and I decided to go with the flat just because it complements the truck a bit better and I think especially with that uh, stock rear fender attached it is pretty obvious to see that uh, flat is indeed the way to go over here. A couple of things, these, all of these measurements are really easy to take. We know that we have extended the wheelbase of the truck 72 millimeters so that also means that that arch section uh, has come back 72 millimeters. We also know that this part over here, this bumper is pulled out another 17 millimeters. So with that we also know where this needs to sit eventually to meet up with this rear body panel. Uh, so all of those factors in mind basically just gives you a flat section uh, from which you can measure all of the holes. Um, I hope that you find that as easy to understand as I hope that that sounded. So this section is going to sit somewhere over here. From there you know that uh, you'll have a flat panel that looks like this. And now for me uh, in addition I wanted to have a couple of, let's see if this uh, shows it, I wanted to have a couple of uh, spots where I can add some glue and have a bit more surface to eventually once this is painted to glue everything together and tie everything together. So this part is a bit shorter than uh, the outer liner. If we put those two together you can see that uh, I actually have a bit of room over here on the top that is to attach it to this bed frame. 
I also have a lot of room over here on the front, even more because I machined out a pocket. That is to eventually glue it onto the cap section using some E6000 or some Shugu. And the same applies to this uh, part in the back over here. There I also wanted to have like half an inch of space to, uh, to kind of play with and to have uh, enough surface to securely attach the rear panel to this side panel. Uh, to attach these two together, of course, just work with what you have, just like we did with uh, the body mount. We do know that we have this uh, whole fender section. This fender has an inner part and it has, let me see if I can find it, it has somewhere over here, I also have an outer part, can't find it right now, but trust me, I have it. Um, you can put the screws through all of this stuff and basically sandwich it together. That will also give you a really nice and tight area right here for you to attach it to the bed. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, just like I did with the Dolrin, I also machined these parts out of cardboard first. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to test fit everything, to see how it lines up, to see if you need to alter something. So right here you can see that this is like the inner liner. This needed to be tweaked a bit, obviously. Right there, and also uh, in the back, I needed to cut out a notch to fall around that uh, rear bracket that attaches to the body mounting point. So that was uh, a bit of a challenge. This also makes uh, sure that you can test fit the fender in place. So you can actually just bolt stuff up to this cardboard to see how it lines up and to see if it works. Now you can tell that that gap is very nicely covered with uh, this part. Uh, I also needed to bring it down a tiny bit just to cover what I thought was a, a otherwise a hideous transition between this part and whatever goes on in front. So all of that was uh, something that I need to uh, kind of take into account when uh, designing this. Another part that I made was uh, this. Uh, so this is then the outer liner of this fender section. You can tell that I put a couple of lines on there. Now these lines, these two little lines right here, these are very important to create the illusion that this is a separate cap section and a separate bed section. I can't have an actual gap going on around here just because this is a really heavy truck. Uh, I don't want to compromise its uh, structural integrity but I do want it to give off the hint of being, well, let's see, a gladiator, but slightly longer than what that SUX103 is. So I wanted to have something uh, yeah, that looks good as well. Now to do that I wanted to have two vertical lines. So I want it to look like this roll bar section actually continues up all the way to the fender. And then of course that is uh, really easy to do once you have the part drawn up. So it looks something like this. And you can tell that if those two lines would have not been there, it would have looked way more flat. Adding just a tiny bit, I did this with like a, a chamfered uh, router bit. Adding a tiny bit of a chamfer in there really does does a lot to the overall look and to that overall illusion that this is a separate cap section and a separate bed section. Let's sandwich all of this stuff together uh, so we have a solid piece just like we have for the other side. You can tell on the other side I also relocated uh, the gas cap to where it would sit for a gladiator which is in front of that uh, left rear wheel or the driver side rear wheel. That's where I would have that uh, gas cap. So I relocated it from sitting behind the rear wheel to in front of the rear wheel. Um, this one is already completely sandwiched together. You can also see that I have an incredible amount of a gluing surface left on, uh, on each end of this fender piece. And um, plenty of bolting room to attach it to that Delrin bed section. Anyway, let's uh, get to work. This is all the stock hardware that I'm just repurposing. Uh, to put it on this uh, on this black styrene. It is plenty, it has plenty of length to actually thread it into uh, all of this stuff as well. So no problems at all over there. You can tell that this fits all nice. This sandwich is together pretty nice. 
and then that's the amount of thread that we have left uh, bolted into those fenders. Now you don't want to fully clamp it down immediately, give it a tiny bit of a wiggle room just so you can line up all these holes. Now we're ready to start bolting it down. Now in this case, by using two pieces, I have like a nice amount of lip going on right here in the top as well, where I want to uh, bolt it to that uh, Delrin piece that is already attached to the interior panel. Also around here to make like a, a nice little pocket in which the body mount fits. This is then for the rear section of the body and then over here all of this is to attach it to the cap section with some of this machined out of that uh, inner piece just to have a bit more room to uh, attach things. Now in this case, this black styrene, this 2mm styrene, that doesn't weigh a whole lot. So there's really no point in uh, skimping out on it. Now these little dimples, they fit inside of these original fender mounting holes. So all of this lines up like this. And then I have some 6mm screws to tap into the Dalrin. That's just one screw, but it gives you a good idea of how nicely this fits. This logo and machining that out, that's of course completely optional, but I did want it to look like a custom truck. You can tell right here that these lines, they line up with that uh, roll bar really nicely. And uh, well, that nut roll bar as well, it attaches super nicely to that, uh, to that cap section. I'm pretty chuffed. I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of what I've been up to with my Axial SCX6 Gladiator. Perhaps you're building one of your own. Uh, I would love to know that and I would love to know what you did to make yours. Um, guess that at this point I am ready to move on to the next stage which is prepping it for paint. Or at least getting an idea of what I want to do for paint. I'm always open to suggestions. I love hearing them. So uh, make sure that you let me know in uh, the comment section down below. If you have any good ideas on what you would like to see me do paint wise. Also seeing that this is not the last video in this series. If anything that I did over here is unclear at all. Please uh, feel free to, uh, to let me know. So I can uh, perhaps explain it a bit further or showcase some stuff a bit further. I did try to document as much as possible of the entire process. So from uh, cutting the cardboard and making the drawings to uh, eventually having a completed piece. Uh, again, you know, you can do this on uh, several different machines. In my case, I did it on my uh, X-Carve. But if you have a step craft as well, you can uh, do this. I will make sure at some point that I have these files available so you can just uh, download them and uh, cut your own parts because that saves you a ton of uh, measuring work. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. It is very much appreciated. That also makes sure that you can uh, stay up to speed with what I'm doing over here, especially if you hit that uh, notifications bell. These videos, these have been a ton of uh, work to uh, sort of prep and to uh, make all these parts. This is not stuff that you can turn out in a, a day or two. At least I can't because I'm not that skilled. Uh, but it is a ton of fun to make it and it is a lot of fun to see uh, a truck come together like this. Especially with it being uh, kind of the way that I hoped that it would turn out. The gas cap is located in the right location. I added my own logo to make it a bit more personal. I think it looks really mean and uh, also very purpose-built and it is actually fairly close to what I initially had uh, drawn up so that's a lot of fun. Let me know what you think in the box below and uh, I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye -bye. Back on.